And I want to challenge you hardcore. Don't let weeds overtake your garden. Don't let weeds in your mind overtake your possible future. What I want to chat with you about is I wanted to give you this illustration <laughs> because if you don't pluck the toxic weeds out of your mind, there's no chance. And you may have noticed, and this is actually a real thing, I'm, I wanted to give you an actual window into like what it might look like if for a second. This is how one strategy to, to be able to like pluck those toxic weeds, if you leave it to yourself to just be out there and get rejected and be like, hey, I'm thinking about whatever, right? You're just like, oh, what? like if you allow anything to just enter your mind, anything is gonna enter your mind, but you, the, for me, I learned I had to be on purpose. I had to be like, okay, what do I want to fill my mind with? And these are actual note cards. And I found my old binder. It's all beat up. And these are my, this is my old shirt. And uh, these are actually my old shoes that I used to wear. And, but I had, in, inside here, I have all these cards. And this is what I did to fill my mind and, and to memorize things, to put things in my mind that I wanted to have and kind of implant in my mind so that I'm not like allowing that person who's not willing to listen to me to like fill my mind with these toxic weeds. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so this was a strategy that was powerful. And I'll tell you what, most of the time, do you think most of the people were interested in what I was saying? No. In fact, the minute they saw me, automatic response of, I don't know you, I don't like you, you're going to try to rob me, steal my time, steal my money, I'm not interested, and I don't care. These three strategies that I'm going to share with you right now changed everything. So, you've got to pluck the weeds of your mind, and so here's, here's the, the deadliest weeds of the mind I learned firsthand, firsthand experience. I learned, you're looking at, at me 10 years of, of learning, that these weeds fear, uncertainty, and doubt. These three, these three weeds, man, they will get you, and they've gotten me over and over. And I've had to learn that, you know what? You got to pluck the FUD. I learned I got I to gotta pluck that FUD. If I don't get in there and pluck that FUD, that FUD will pluck me. I want to challenge you. You may think that you're on an island. Well, it's only me that has FUD. It's not true. This is a timeless problem. This is a challenge for everybody in any industry. And I want to challenge you hardcore. Don't let weeds overtake your garden. Don't let weeds in your mind overtake your possible future pluck the FUD. Tip number one that I learned. Um, <laughs> I love this from Mark Twain. I had a great deal of trouble in my life and most of it never happened. <laughs> Man, we could talk about that for a long time, but let's just leave it at that. Key number two. Man, I have to tell you a little story. I, uh, <laughs> I remember going through this struggle when I was completely broke, my car's broken down, and I borrowed cash from my, from my roommate Trevor's sock drawer. He had $100. And it was my first year out selling. And I remember thinking, man, if only I were able to make, if I could make, like some people make like 10 grand out in the summer, if I could do that, man, I could buy a new car. I could pay five grand for a new car, and I could have a little bit of money to help pay for my college, and I would be set. There would be no more fear. And I remember thinking, you know, at some point, it's going to reach a point where fear goes away. Let me fast forward five years. I'm going to say this humbly, but I'm going to say it boldly. Because it's true. After nearly being fired in my first two weeks from a straight commission job because I didn't make one sale. Five years later, I had earned just over a million dollars in sales commission 
from doing what I just showed you right here with persistence. And yeah. holy smokes. And then that seed was a bedrock to then start my own company. Within those next five years, I took my company public in 2010. And, and the year I did, I made $6.8 million on the day that I went public. But here's the principle. This is, I, I, don't, I don't even care about any of that. I want to give you some context, but here's the point. This fear cloud. I have this belief that once I reach a certain level, once I reach a certain place, I'm like, dude, the fear can't find me. And I cashed, I cashed a check for it. I, I, I was trying to find a picture of it, and of, of, the, of the check, and I, I couldn't find it in my computer. I have it at home buried in my stuff. But I, I cashed a check for $256,000. And I was like, I've made it. I'm like, I'm 25 years old. And I just, like, I've made it. Like, I can pay off my house with this check. I wish I would. That would have been smart if I would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, but here's the, here's the point. Uh, not even a week later. Not one week went by. Guess what found me? Fear. Honestly, I was pissed. I'm like, no, that's not what happens. Why am I fearful? Why am I feeling afraid right now? Like, I, I'm good. I've made it. I've arrived. Like, I learned firsthand that no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, the cloud is trying to find us as human beings. This cloud, the whole, every, no, every day you go to sleep, you wake up the next morning, the, the fear cloud is there. You got to ditch it. Ditch it.